Hey, Internet, JB here from Dark Side Records. Do you know about uh, an album that's coming out that you're excited about? Maybe uh, your Drakes or your what have yous? Well, guess what? If you head on over to darksiderecords.com right now, you can pre order your favorite albums. It guarantees that you get a copy here in store. We hold it for you, and it's available for you first thing on release date, so you can be one of the cool kids. With a cool physical copy. And that's right, we get indie exclusive variants. They're all available to you or on our app, which you can download for free over at the iTunes or Google Play app stores. If you know something's coming out, help us help you. Pre order your favorite new music, new releases right here at Dark Side Records. Support your local record store and get the music. You, you're gonna get it anyway. You, you got the music in you. You gonna get it. This is the Dark Side Records and Gallery Podcast. Welcome to the Dark Side Records Podcast. This, of course, is a podcast brought to you by the good folks here at Dark Side Records, located at 611 Duchess Turnpike in Poughkeepsie, or on the web at darksiderecords.com. Uh, this is a podcast, of course, about music, the music industry, other things, many other things, <laughs> and dick jokes. Sorry, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> There's a lot of ins and a lot of outs here. If you're listening to this uh, podcast on your iTunes or your Google Play or your Spotify, we stream these live Sunday nights. Look at our Facebook page to get the scheduling information for when you can watch this stream live to get a bunch of bonus content. Sunday, Sunday, <clears throat> Sunday. That might one day move to a Patreon, so get it while it's free. That's what I'm saying, so... So wait a minute, you're considering this bonus content, like the behind-the-scenes, raw, uncut version? People will pay for this. So they get to watch you spit chips and him eat them off the floor? Uh, internet, if would, you're paying. Would you pay money? <laughs> <laughs> if we did do a Patreon, what kind of exclusive content would you like to see? Leave it in the comments below. I think maybe like a five-minute video just of your back and a back scratcher. I would love that. Oh, man. That feels so good. A human back scratcher? Oh. No, like a wooden one. Like whichever whichever part-timer has the worst sales performance, they have to scratch <laughs> JB's back for five minutes. Mm. <laughs> mm. But not with face, just hand. Mm. And the yeah, yeah, just an anonymous hand. I, I hereby authorize that content. <laughs> and then what we do is whoever has the best sales, we blindfold them and we tell them they get to pet a puppy. <laughs> Either way, I win. I if wonder what <laughs> if <laughs> so gross. Could it be meat? What? What? <laughs> Sorry. Eve just said, "What you said? What would you pay for?" And Eve said, "JB baby birding JJ." <laughs> as long as it's like a a fine steak or something like that. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to swallow it. You just yeah, have just to chew, chew it up it. and spit it. I still don't like it. <laughs> I still don't like it. Technically, you won't be consuming it. I mean, I guess, actually, that might be good bonus content, purely on the fact that I might throw up as well. So if you would like to see things like that, we might move over notes? to a Patreon. Yep. I switched it up for this for this podcast. Hmm. I switched to the Good Nature Brewing Winter Weas- White Weasel Winter IPA. Mmm, delicious. Cheers. 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 We should talk about one thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yesterday, uh, which was, of course, February 9th, 2019, uh, was a little event that uh, we've been holding here for the past few years, was our Vintage Valentine's Indoor Flea Market. Uh, It's just a a chance that we get together with some local vendors, local artists, local craft makers, um, just people who make cool shit, who are in our community. Uh, This dope-ass beanie there. Yeah. See? Uh, and, of course, we just had a little indoor flea market. It was on Saturday for a couple hours. Uh, it was great. We had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So much fun. And a lot of turnout, too. Thank you, everybody that came out, both vendors and peoples alike. Thank you so much for being there. Seriously. Not to imply that vendors aren't people. I guess you know, the, the, they, were all, they were all people. Yeah. It was time. a cat. Somebody had a, a therapy cat. But I feel like that was a, a, a not a vendor. It was just a person who came to the okay. flea market. So I just want to be specific. Yeah. Okay. Just saying, we did serve non-humans yesterday. Mm-hmm. A therapy mm-hmm. cat? They had a little blue thing on. Was it Becca? 
No. no. <laughs> but she literally exploded behind the counter as soon as it walked in the door. There was blood everywhere. That's right. So we had a, a bunch of vendors, including Atomic Annie. We had a beer tasting from Good Natured Farm Brews. One of their brews featured right up there. That's right. From uh, Hamilton, New York, a great uh, New York brewery who were here. They were doing a tasting of two of their beers, which we mentioned at the top of the podcast, a Blonde Ale. And the, oh, the blonde was really good. I the White that. Weasel Winter IPA. That's right. What is a White Weasel? Oh. Taste it. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that could go south. So <laughs> for anyone listening, that gets uncomfortable Patreon. quick. Patreon, Patreon, the White Weasel rides again. <laughs> That's your new superhero name. <laughs> Why is it mine? He's way paler. It's true. Yeah, you got me there. He's not really weaselly though. Is his... this the blonde? It's more capybara. <laughs> so is this the White Weasel or the blonde? That's the blonde. I like that. You want one? I'll get you one. Or you can serve yourself, too. Just drink mine. It's fine. Have a sip. It's a sippy poo. Welcome to Herpes. Anyway, so uh, so Good Nature Farm Brewing was here. Welcome to Syphilis. Given, oh, cool. Damn it. I always wanted to try this. Um, they were here doing a free beer tasting. Thank you. It was, it was delicious and awesome. Uh, Sweet Bakes Cafe was here. They're a bakery that's located in uh, Wappinger's Falls. I'm pulling Falls. this hair off your sleeve. It's been bugging me for an hour. Probably attached to you still. In Wappingers Falls, New York, uh, they were here serving uh, delicious, like dessert waffles. The waffle tacos, I saw those. those were... I didn't, I didn't eat one. I didn't either, but I wanted one. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and there I... were fresh berries. Yeah, and like Nutella, and uh, awesome. it's not a good look when you're trying to talk to a lot of people with a beard, though. It just would have been plastered all mm-hmm. over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also learned that they uh, do a podcast. Uh, I wish I remembered the name off the top of my head, but they do uh, specifically a wrestling podcast. The the bakery does? Yeah. Hmm. Well, the guy from the bakery gotcha. does. But I don't know if it's Sweet Bakes Sanctioned. Wrestling Recaps. <laughs> it's yeah. Sweet Marks. So, mm. Kind of like that. <clears throat> but uh, So our boy Tyler was quite excited to talk to him. Oh, really? We might go jump on that podcast and talk some wrestling nerdery hmm. sometime. But there were a bunch of vendors. Uh, Atomic Annie was here. A bone to pick, uh, who made weird art out of uh, actual bones. So creepy. <coughs> Got, uh, it's a trap. Lando was here. Uh, Chalk of the town, who made really cool DIY uh, coasters, wa- uh, was here. The uh, it's a trap. Lando. I yes. was confused momentarily because I thought that on the sign they were trying to quote like a sign the quote of it's a trap to lando calrissian i thought they were misquoting star wars and i was about to like get into a thing and then i'm like well, maybe it's their business name everyone knows admiral akbar says that save it for the other podcast no buddy no okay. no Listen, i will not save it i will to, not be quieted if you talk to general nibub nien he would know the answer are you talking about What's his name? N- Niam nien nub yeah yeah that's the one <laughs> no you're talking about general uh general mothman Moth, Mothman no, Farquaad? he's not a general. Grand Moff Tarkin? <laughs> That's the one. He's dead. Oh, he died in gra- episode four. He had a grand mall seizure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> Epilepsy <laughs> jokes. Check. Check it off the agenda for the podcast. Ah, uh, God. Okay, who else, the fuck else was here? John Briner was here. Uh, Pottery by Linz was here. Uh, Sacred Herbs was here with delicious, amazing smelling candles, magic and macabre. Uh, measured Time, who had vintage stuff. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, did throwbacks. Say, did you say Damascus Blades? Damascus Blades? Oh, man. We're super cool. They make uh, hand-make Damascus steel blades, and I caught him talking with another vendor about uh, maybe hosting a little thing on how to make Damascus steel blades with the cool textures and shit. Hmm. Saying that he was like, "Come over sometime, and we'll we'll uh, we'll do a class. I'll show you how to do it." I was like, "See, this is what it is. That's what it comes down to. Folks helping folks, we're making connections, we're building bridges, not walls." Everybody wins. So it was a great time. Thank you to everyone who came. Thank you to all the vendors. And, of course, there was uh, free live music in the evening from uh, Freedom Class, Stunads, and Timber Beast. Stunads? Stunads. Oh, I it was Stunads. Whatever. I think it's a difference. Hmm. You, well, you wouldn't say – I guess you would say Wolfman's got nards. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I take it back. Stunads. I still think you have the wrong emphasis, but we'll no. move on. <laughs> 
Oh, you go like stunads? Stunad. Like they're a stenographer? You're, you're like, you're hyphenating it. Stunards. Right. But you're saying it's like a stunographer. Yes. I had to say that joke twice. Yeah. yeah. It was that good. <laughs> no one appreciated it anymore the second time. <laughs> So, yeah, so it was a great time. Thank you. Uh, I already said that. So uh, we have a bunch more events planned. Uh, if you enjoyed that, we have uh, an events calendar on our website, darksiderecords.com. You can see some of the upcoming things. We have a Patch Adam coming up in March. We have Record Store Day, of course, April 13th. Mark your calendars now. Uh, the Dark Side Bazaar is going to be happening June 15th. That's our outdoor flea market. You might be able to see. Okay, uh, that's our outdoor flea market. You might even see a couple of the same vendors, and uh, we've got a bunch of great stuff planned for all of those. So if you're not on our email list or following us on Facebook or whatever the fuck it is so you can see what the fuck we're doing, do th- do that thing. Do all the things. Sign up for all the things. Uh, in fact, we have something coming up uh, next week that is February 16th. Uh, if you're around, uh, Octave Music presents a battle of the Hudson Valley bands. We will have six Hudson Valley bands that will be here competing in-store, performing live. One winner take all will get... Uh, As opposed free- to them performing like after hours and quiet? That's what we do. They're all bringing their cassettes to listen to. <laughs> uh, so oh, that's a great idea. You should do a silent battle of the bands. Headphones? Yeah, like everybody has like a headphone and a copied cassette, and they kind of like dance around. This is a great idea because it'd be so much more awkward if you're the band and you can't hear your own music. You just watch somebody judging you in silence. Yeah, like you get a bunch of people to sign up and then you know, everybody gets a vote and like that's how we do it. Yeah, and it sounds it, really peaceful. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be funny as shit to watch because we could keep playing music in store and everybody. Right. All the regular people. Yeah, it'd be like, super quiet and it just the, the band has to watch but people's reactions. They have those at festivals, not like that's the headphone what I'm discos. It on, yeah. yeah. That'll be our dark side battle of the bands when we do our own. Mm. Okay. I like that because I don't have to listen to it. <laughs> Except in headphones. I'll be working. Okay. <laughs> so Hudson, obligation. Hudson Valley bands get ready because we're going to be doing our own silent battle of the bands. Winner will get to scratch his back <laughs> on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> on our Patreon. Winner gets to be the hand. But yeah, if you're here for on the 16th, uh, come see the Octave Music Battle of the Bands. Six Hudson Valley bands will be here performing live. Uh, come cheer them. Come boo them. Uh, whichever you decide is the right one. I'm going to be a judge. And I'm the fucking Simon Cowell of this shit. I'm going to be merciless. Merciless. You've never once been merciless. I've also never once been Simon Cowell. No. Yeah. It's time to make a change, Can boys. Can you run the show with a certain Englishman's voice? You want me to practice right now? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. So this is me. Okay, this is my... (laughs) This is me during the band's performance, okay? Oh, no. No, I don't like that at all. Mm, Terrible. Mm, Where's my... Where's my tea? But no one will hear it because it's like a band is playing live, you know? And then uh, and I'll give my review. What the fuck was that? This is bullshit. Cut off your mullet. You're a failure. You fuck. So stay on that stage. That's right. Oh, you want to come over here and talk some shit? Fuck you. I like to call that segment JB's tour of the English Isles. <laughs> <laughs> no less than five dialects were just used. Crikey, what a pile of shit. And a constipated Aussie the best I got. No, but man, seriously, I'm going to be mean to you. I'm going to be pretty, f- I'm going to be the the uh, hardest one, I think, out of all the, the judges. Who are the other judges? Uh, Tom Rudd of Octave Music. Mm-hmm. That's going to be one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy who runs Manifest Records, whose name is eluding me in my brain because it doesn't one, work. Isn't he the one giving away the recording contract? Barry Hogue. But shouldn't he not be a judge if it's his recording contract to give away? No, that's what, it's like Shark Tank. I guess. That's right. You could also win a recording contract with Manifest Records. Don't ask me for details because I don't actually or know what they what it means. of the Dallas Mavericks. Ooh. Mm. You can hold us to that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of 
Speaking of things that are happening, uh, Record Store Day is going to be happening on uh, April 13th. What's that? <laughs> I'm glad you asked because we're definitely not going to dedicate two entire episodes to this. Oh, God. In March and April. So <clears throat> we should make sure to talk about it as much as we can here. But uh, Record Store Day, of course, is April 13th. and uh, Early this year. That's right. For those who don't know, it's a special day uh, here at Independent Record Stores that are meant to celebrate everything that we all love about indie shops. There's going to be exclusive releases that are only available at indie record stores, uh, mostly in the U.S., but other countries around the world have their own exclusives that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, We always do live music, sales, beer, um, whatever other cast of characters we invite into the store for that day. Hobos. Mm -hmm. They just show up. I have a great promotional idea. Which I'm not going to announce yet, but is, I think, a lot of fun. Okay. We're going to have a really fun giveaway. Okay. And, of course, there's been a couple little sneak peeks of things uh, that are coming out on Record Store Day. Of course, they do exclusive releases. And uh, one of those sneak peeks that's coming out, I like the face that JJ has given me, which is, what are you about to say right now? Yeah, I don't right know now? what you're about to say, because there's at least one you definitely cannot say. The one that I'm not allowed to say. Of course, the three-inch record player. Ah, yeah, that one. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so you who might be White Stripes fans uh, may know that Jack White, on a tour of Japan, found a, an adorable tiny record player that plays three-inch records, a special format. Uh, and that was re- only available in Japan at the time. Mm-hmm. And he released a couple of White Stripes uh, singles on this format. And for Record Store Day, uh, they'll be making a brand new edition. Except this one. Metal tone arm, actual audio technica cartridge, uh, steel design or I guess aluminum metal design yeah. of the body. So is this is this a third man sanctioned recreation? No, this is actually a record store day initiative. So okay. mm-hmm. um, we learned about this back at summer camp this past year. Oh, and they <clears throat> basically I think the the third man one was called the triple inch phone. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember what the original brand was, but basically Jack White had sourced the last of them because the manufacturer went under and all mm. the molds were destroyed. So like mm. all the casts and everything were gone. And so Record Store Day, along with Crosley, I know, I know, but keep your knickers out of a twist right now, worked together to manufacture them again in Japan. I'm not sure if it's the original manufacturer. It might be. To redevelop, redye, retool, hmm. to put together this really cool little thing. And if it's one thing that Crosley knows how to do well is make toys. Fair enough. Yeah, but, <laughs> it's um, still cool. S- shit on them if you want to. <clears throat> they are a sponsor of Record Store Day, for which we it's are grateful. Three mm-hmm. inches. It's that's an impressive shit accuracy. Yeah, like <laughs> you know, it's a this is a real functioning, real live turntable. It's pretty, right. pretty fucking cool. And, you know, shit on it if you want to, but it's a it's just a fun novelty. Um, and I don't know, but I know that Jenny must be freaking out for this thing. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I'm going to get one. It's, it's just fucking cool, because I own the original White Stripe 7 inches, but have never once played them. I know you can. And now I will be able to. Aren't they 3 inches? Did I say 7 inches? You said 7 inches. I didn't mean to seven say inch, three yeah. inches? Seven, three inches. 7 yeah. 3 inches. 7 3 inches. Yep. And uh, there will so you be. Make it sound bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that. That's a confusing scenario. <laughs> I just want to say that out loud. No, I've got seven of them. <laughs> anyway, so there's going to be. Uh... Rolade spills relief. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be a couple different three inch releases. A couple have been teased on the interwebs. It, mostly in the product photos of the actual tiny turntables. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it looks like we're getting uh, five three-inch records. I can't actually confirm any of this information. Do they come in a package with the turntable, or you have to purchase them separately? They're separate, as far as I know. I actually don't really have any details yeah. mm. on this thing yet. I do believe that the turntable, I think, don't hold me to this, but I think the turntable is going to retail for 80 bucks. It's all speculation at this point. Hey, JP, yeah. what's the one you can't talk about? 
Well, uh, there's one I can't talk about, and then there's actually a couple that I found in unrelated articles uh, that just said, uh, specifically, I was reading an article about a band's release. I won't say what it was. I don't want to spoil anything, but I was reading an article about uh, a band's release, and in the description of it, on this article, it said, they have this coming out. They're also going to be having a special release that comes out on April 13th in independent record stores. I felt like... That's some shitty journalism right there. <laughs> yeah. Or somebody really fucked up when they sent out a press release yep. about it's something. been known to happen. Yeah. Or, again, it could just be something that was put out, you know, is intended to come out the day before, but they're just kind of lumping it in with right. the Saturday. So that it does could happen. not be an official Record Store Day release. It could just be a release that's coming out on that day specifically. Friday. Yeah. Um, Eves mm. did mention the first that we are know about, mm. the Foo Fighters 3-inch. That's right. So it's one of their earlier singles that's coming out. Hmm. I can't remember which one. Eves can probably tell us. So do you think because it's on the 13th this year, it's the year it all finally comes tumbling down? I don't think so. But so any, any superstitious people out there? Record Store Day is traditionally on the third Saturday of April. But this year it is not because the third Saturday of April is the coming of the zombies, mm. mm-hmm. a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Easter. Walking Dead premiere. Yeah. Mm. So Oh, Easter. Because uh, in the past, Record Store Day has fallen on Easter. Historically, a lot of people travel, blah, blah, blah. It, it's just not good for business, really. So normally in this situation, it would bump back a day, or a week, excuse me. So normally it would fall to the following Saturday, which has also happened in the past. But uh, because Record Store Day is a global phenomenon... Uh, it can't because Norway shuts down for that weekend for King's Day. And Norway is a huge – or is it Norway or the Netherlands? It might be – one of the ends, one of the end European countries shuts down for King's Day. And there's nothing you can do because if you push another week, then you're into May and there's some other European holiday. I can't remember which. So the only option was to bump it up a week. So – Based on the winter we were having so far, could be totally fine. Could be a shit show. We were uh, I was talking with our friends from down the valley in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hey, guys. And the weekend before Record Store Day last year, they got two feet of snow. Holy shit. So they're a little worried. <laughs> okay. But who knows where we're going to be. I'm sure there's some sort of, uh, you know, Medium-sized animal that they can sacrifice. Like there, are, there are things you can do. Yeah, to help you know weather. Capybara. <laughs> True. It's the world's chup- largest rodent. Chupacabra. Not confirmed. Not a rodent. <laughs> <laughs> that's the goat sucker. True. That's what that, it's called. That's not chupacabra. Is like goat sucker. It preys on livestock. Do you not know your cryptozoology? <laughs> don't get into this conversation if you don't know your cryptozoology. Sorry, I'm really more of an equine specialist, so I I know my I know my world and I stay in it. You e- want to open that box of worms? <laughs> Can of worms? Whatever. Eve says Tauntaun, you can sleep in it. Oh. <laughs> yep. And then you can eat it. Well, it didn't look very appetizing in the film. Look. And at no point do they recommend eating it. Look, when you're starving. But I guess that was technically the sweetbreads. Hmm. What? Vegans don't know what that means. No, they don't. I do know what planet that occurred on. Hoth, thank you. He chose his I one. Know. I know. I Empire should, Strikes Back is his strength. I'm trying to be positive here. I'm trying to enable us so we mm. work together on this podcast, you see? The other podcast we fight about nerdy shit. This one, we, we help each other out, throw a bone. Scratch a back. Scratch. <laughs> for money. Or a puppy. Uh, sorry, Tyler. That's a, that is a whole other <laughs> contest. Call, we could call it just blindfold people and be like, is it like JB's back or a puppy? Well, uh, we'll do it on Record Store Day. Name that so. surface. Just <laughs> <laughs> like you and a dog down right here on this table. This is quality uh, live streaming content. This is our YouTube channel, what it's going to turn into. <laughs> we'll just be making garbage content. Hey, we'll probably become millionaires overnight. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We should create a second channel. We should make like a, 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 a YouTube channel that's... 
just the three of us, but it's just all of our horrible ideas for things and no way dark side branded. Oh my god. I have so many. We have so, <laughs> so many bad ideas. Did he get the hair? I wonder if he's going to get the hair. Oh, I hope so. I'll let you know what the name of the YouTube channel is so you can subscribe later. Uh, something else that's going on in the world of music. Right now, in fact, as we are recording this podcast. Ta-da! James Bond? What? Ta-da! No, it's one of them. You know, like that organ. Like, Ta-da! Like the dramatic. I thought you were doing the James Bond theme song. I've never seen a James Bond film. Really? Never once have I seen a James Bond film. I didn't drag you to one in all the, our years hanging out? Nope. Wrong podcast. Fix that. Nope. No. Bullshit. This is the right podcast because you always, you naysay James Bond on Dorkside. Yeah, because I tried sucks. to talk about it like last year and no. No, oh, it sucks, but Venom was cool. <laughs> it's the opposite of what I said. It's true. He didn't say that. Nope. <laughs> JB, hear me now, <laughs> Dark Side listeners. He is a selective the nerd. The podcast people actually listen to. JB, the Michelle shocked loving motherfucker of the store, was a huge fan of Venom. That's right. The, and the, you can hear it on the Dark Side podcast. Go subscribe now on iTunes or Spotify or Google Play, I guess, to hear all, hear me talk all about Venom. And how much I loved it. You know, Aquaman was very pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was very... Jason Momoa is an attractive man. The Samoans were great. Mm-hmm. And my yeah. favorite Girl Scout cookie. Mm-hmm. Look, mm-hmm. we talked about this on Dorks. I really like a Thin Mint, actually. The movie was pretty but dumb. That's fine. That's a, that's a thing that exists. If you don't want to think and you just want to watch a thing and what have about, a lot of pretty visuals. How do you feel visuals? about wet dreams may come? You, I'm sorry. Did you say wet dreams may come? <laughs> No, that's the Rob Williams parody of that film, <laughs> where he just jizzes paint for an hour. Mm. Uh, wet dreams, a wet dreams may come. Is that the one where he dies and he's like going after his wife? Yeah, something. I didn't see it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I only really watch good movies. Okay. What's that? I only watch good movies. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Dark Side podcast. I know. Save it. All right. We missed it. Something that's going on right now in the world of music, which is what this podcast is about. The Grammys. Oh, Grammy. The Grammys. Hmm. Uh, The Grammys are going on right now. The Grammys, for anyone who doesn't know, is, of course, an award show for the music industry where... You know, I don't think I've ever, I, I've ever actually watched the Grammys. Me either. I think I've watched the Grammys before. Maybe once really twice. Remember, I used to watch the VMAs back when like, MTV okay, was a thing. Okay. A Grammy Award, mm-hmm. or Grammy, mm-hmm. is an award presented by the Recording Academy to recognize achievements in the music industry. The annual presentation ceremony features performance by prominent artists mm-hmm. and the presentation of those awards that have a more popular interest. It shares recognition of the music industry as that of other performance awards, such as the Academy Awards, the Emmy Awards, and the Tony Awards, established in 1958. Hmm. Is this the one that doesn't have a host? No, it's the Emmys, right? The, where Kevin Hart with Kevin Hart, it? right? Mm. I'm not sure. No. The Oscars is the Oscar. Are Oscars and Emmys the same thing? No, Emmys are for TV. Oscars are for movies. Okay, we should probably have had this. Oscar Oscars are the same as the Academy Award. Oscars Eves, can you Academy comment Award? below with what the Oscars <laughs> Eves, are? Eves, can you do our podcast for us? <laughs> Uh, truthfully, I feel like I've never actually watched the Grammys in my whole life. I feel like my parents got excited about it, and maybe that's why, as a uh, shitty kid, I was not into whatever the Grammys were. Yeah, my uh, my grandparents, I feel like, watched all those award shows. Yeah. I think it was, maybe it was generational? I don't know. <clears throat> Aaron likes them. Okay. I, she Sounds hasn't watched right. them in a long time, but I know she definitely used to watch them. Okay. Mm. Okay. I always catch the recaps the next day. Yeah, I'll hear about it on Stern tomorrow. Mm. Well, let's see here. According to the Google, pop vocal album was Ariana Grande's Sweetener. I don't know it. Uh, oh, it's an album, not a song. Okay. That's correct. Musical theater album was The Band's Visit with Katrina Link. Oh. Oh. Okay. Great album. Song written for visual media was, of course, Lady Gaga with Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt. So did you just give away this year's Grammy winners? <gasps> Shut up. Spoiler alert. I did notice that the answers, uh, the the winners were already posted on many websites really? this afternoon, which to me didn't make sense, which is why I was suddenly confusing well, what the Grammys the were. the Grammys go all day, just not the televised portion. There's a whole shitload of Grammys that are given out 
way before you see the televised portion. Because like I saw best, best co- jazz flute record and yeah, all that like other that. stuff. Like best comedy album was Dave Chappelle. I saw that. Yeah, like that's all the things that aren't televised. Uh, Eve taught me that uh, between the buried and me may have won one in a comment on our live stream. That was Eve's. No, that was John Tesh said that. John Tesh said that on the last podcast. the John Tesh. Yeah, the John Tesh. Oh, that's all amazing. Uh, best was- rock album was Greta Van Fleet from the Fires. Best metal performance, High on Fire, Electric Messiah. Hmm. Best rap or sung performance was Donald Glover's This Is America. Best R&B song, Booed Up, by LMA. LMI? LMA. LMA. And DJ Mustard. Huh. He sounds delicious. Uh, I think he did it in the billiard room, if I remember correctly. <laughs> With a <laughs> wrench? Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> but so if you're watching the Grammys <laughs> right now... There may or may not have been a murder that happened. <laughs> this is the part of the podcast where we read our phones on the internet. <laughs> does anyone, so here's what I want to know. Does, does, I know the answer to the first question, which is do you guys watch the Grammys? Which is no. No. Every year. How do you feel about their significance in the record industry as the record industry evolves and stands currently? I, I don't know. I feel like our perspective is tainted, but – I feel like they're sort of irrelevant. Like, it's all big names, at least the the televised portion. I will admit, total 100% ignorance to the mm-hmm. non-televised portion. Mm. Because there's so many awards and so many talented people who do get awards. And not to say that the people getting the awards on the televised portion are not talented. They certainly are. They work hard. They know their craft, whether or not they're writers or singers or producers, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just that... In terms of <clears throat> our store, it's just not super relevant. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say, like Ariana Grande or you know Lady Gaga, whoever you were just mentioned, mm. we carry all those things and we sell them. It's just not the core of what we do. Yeah, and <clears throat> also all of those artists are going to be. Again, we'll stick with the televised portion because I think that's what we're really talking about when you say the Grammys. Correct. Um, Concerning, I just learned that there's an untelevised portion that goes on at length before. Like all day. So, okay. Maybe even two days. I'm not sure. What the fuck? <clears> two <throat> days of award shows? Do no, it's not an award show. Do it's they like let them, an awards presentation. Do they let them sleep? Yes. In well, the, again, the televised portion is probably in one place, and then, you know, in the cafeteria <laughs> down the hall, they've yeah, got the untelevised they just like, put it in the mail. assembly <laughs> line of <laughs> Grammy winners. They get a smaller trophy and a gift card. See, to Hooters. The, <laughs> these, so they can get their free lunch. These are the things I need to know. You see, this is I just I, gave you all the insider info you'll ever need into the Grammys. Well, so many of those artists are streaming artists for the most part. Seeing and seeing as how streaming is the dominant side of the music industry currently, mm-hmm. that makes complete sense. Do they count Spotify streams into? Uh, uh, does that count towards sales numbers? Yes, for people. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, no one would be winning Otherwise, anything. no one's making money or That's selling like things. Bon Jovi was at the top of the charts a couple weeks ago because there was a CD given out with every uh, concert ticket sold, which is like a new way of flubbing the charts. So oh, that ain't new. It's fairly new. Mm. Or it's on the rise. A few years, anyway. yeah. Mm-hmm. Did it with uh, – Jack White did that with mm-hmm. uh, his last tour. Uh, I learned even that uh, Lady Gaga did that. So many, like, you know, so many artists. Like, again, Bon Jovi hasn't released an album in years at this point, but he had a number one album on the charts recently because of all the ticket sales that happened. I thought he was dead. It's, no, he just went back to Bon Jovi. Oh. Well, maybe we should talk about Spotify a little bit. The streaming industry definitely makes up the bulk of the industry revenues at this point. I believe it's like... Uh, it's more than eighty percent. It might, wow. I might say ninety percent. Wow! <clears throat> and at least in, I know this statistic because I just read this. Um, in terms of digital music, streaming makes up eighty percent of that market, hmm. and digital downloads make up only twenty percent of that market nowadays. Hmm. So, streaming continues to rise, and Spotify just reported their first ever profitable quarter. Whoa! Yeah, so all these years they've been around, never been profitable. Yeah. A good, uh, what's Spotify, like a good 10 or 12 years now, right? Mm-hmm. Give or take, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so they just reported their first profitable quarter. And, as you mentioned earlier, 
they just bought two major podcast platforms, and they say that. Oh, she said never ever a dig. Hmm. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, they just bought two major podcasting for- forums and said that they see that uh, non music broadcast or content content yeah will make up uh, at least 20% of their business in the coming years. So they're trying to keep a foot in the podcast. So which of that 20% are we seeing for our non-music content right here? I don't know if you know a lot about uh, Spotify payouts, (laughs) but don't get your hopes up, buddy. (laughs) Well, I have some facts. I'm pretty sure I'm an investor, actually. (laughs) No. Thanks for keeping them afloat. That's what I do. You just got profitable. That's what I do in the music industry. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, let's see, let's see, where is that number? The top 20, 20 streamers represent 99.35% of all streaming dollars. And the top 10 streamers account for over 97% of all streaming revenue. Wow. So, top 5 account for 88% of dollars. Hmm. And, uh, it's a small number. So, let's see. This says that the biggest takeaway by far is YouTube's content ID. Uh, it shows a whopping 48%, per seem, 48 per stre- and 48% again. <laughs> of streams, all streams, generate only 7% of revenue. Wow. Think about that. Wow. 48% produce 7% of revenue. So, 50% of all music streams only generate 7% of revenue. For the music industry. Wow. That's fucking crazy. And so, let's see. Um, the Spotify stream rate, so that's the rate that they pay per stream, mm-hmm. dropped again 16%. <laughs> so last year, it was point zero zero three nine seven cents. Okay. So, less than $0.04 cents a stream. And now... It has dropped to point zero zero three three one, again a sixteen percent decrease. Point zero zero three cents, so three hundredths of a cent. Correct. Per stream. Per stream. Yeah. And how many streams does it Money take to in the make bank. equal one album sale? If anybody, this isn't in the article. Just if anybody knows this, internet. I'm not looking at this. Yeah, the I took math now, like so. three times in college. It's not going to be. Me. So, I got no answers. They gener- the, the way the industry does it is that approximately 1,500 streams equals one album sale. So, let's do some math, shall we? So, I like math, <laughs> it's my strong suit. Uh, sure. So, one album sale, according to Spotify, is equal to $4.96. Okay. You have to get. 1,500 people to stream your song, or album, I suppose, to get less than $5. So when you're buying a CD or an LP, and you're paying, let's say, $10 for a CD and $20 for an LP, that artist is getting dramatically fucking more money for their hard work, effort, vision, all the people that go into creating that. They're actually sustaining a wage. But the industry as a whole is not trending that way. Well, I I look at it from uh, uh, a larger picture sense, specifically in the context of, I I like the way you phrase it, is that it's not just about an artist, but there are so many other people that are involved in releasing an album and recording. For real. So many other things. Engineers, producers... Mastering people, a caterer, studio, yeah, uh, caterers, <laughs> drug buyer, yeah, drug, mm-hmm. drug dealers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. graphic designers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, lawyers for that matter. Like, it's fucking everywhere. The guy who cleans up after everyone trashes things. <laughs> Eve says now he's depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like this this article is enlightening. We should post this article. Um, that way everybody can see it. And so the per stream rate 
so Spotify we established is the worst actually, even though they're the biggest mm-hmm. uh, platform at point zero zero three three one. Next comes in uh, iTunes slash Apple at point zero zero four nine five. So almost almost five one hundredths of a penny. <laughs> uh, YouTube. Oh, holy shit! YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Ready? Point zero 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 two eight. So two thousandths of a cent. Yeah. Now, does that take into account uh, the YouTube music platform that has launched recently? Yes, that's what that is. Oh, it's, that sucks. Okay. Yeah. So they're saying that streams per song. I know. Uh, I know a guy who wants to make his fortune being a YouTube YouTube star and. You're confusing YouTube content with YouTube music. That's the difference. PewDiePie. I don't know who that is. He's a guy on YouTube. A what? He's a, what are you like talking a millionaire, about? I you think. You old man. <laughs> so What's YouTube? <laughs> it's on um, like computers now. It's so interesting to follow because... <laughs> Same as you porn. <laughs> Close. YouTube is paying, like we said, point zero 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 two eight cents per share. Mm. Per stream, sorry. They hold... A forty-eight and a half percent market share of all streaming music. Yeah. So Spotify, by contrast, only holds a twenty-nine point two two streaming hmm. market share. So that means that even though YouTube makes up more than half of all music streams, they only they account for less than seven percent of all industry revenue. Spotify accounts for almost forty-nine percent of industry revenue in terms of streaming. Wow. Yeah, it's funny because I know m- many musicians who are in touring bands, you know, writing and recording, who pretty much exclusively just listen to music on YouTube. I think it's just like the easiest platform for them. It's something that they're already using to look at stuff, and they just, you know, they see a full album stream, and that's what they do. I think you literally just hit the nail on the head right there. It's that it's easy. Mm hmm. It's not right. It's just easy. And really... State of the world. The recording industry has to do something because they're fucking giving it up. Everybody is struggling. All departments are failing. Physical media has basically just gotten the fucking chopping block at this point. Yeah. If it wasn't for Record Store Day, like, the whole independent sector might be considered irrelevant at the top of the food chain. Like, we, I mean, we already basically are, but the thing is we don't go away and we're a fucking thorn in the side. <laughs> Not unlike syphilis. <laughs> That's damn right. We're the syphilis of the music industry. Um, I really don't want to read into that metaphor. <laughs> oh, God. When things start falling off, oh, it's our fault. God. I would say it's the opposite. I would say when things start to pick up, everybody likes to piggyback on the things that break at independent stores. So let's think about it. Independent stores, uh, 11 years ago, start record store day. Now, that was before our time, but not too much before our time. Mm -hmm. Two years, yeah. Record store day becomes a worldwide phenomenon in which labels literally are competing to get their exclusive titles pressed and into stores. Mm Mm-hmm. On one-way content. So, like, it's a windfall for them because every unit they sell is fucking out the door and non-returnable. But here we are. We're breaking artists. We're keeping catalog alive, Mm -hmm. which new releases have really taken a dive in the last Mm -hmm. year. And I think that's going to continue to be because so many platforms are really just going to a streaming model. But here we are persevering, and I lost my train of thought a little bit there. <laughs> uh, oh, here's what I was getting Something at. about perseverance. Right. So it started with indie record stores. Let's name how many people have their own exclusive physical pressings now. You can pretty much always count on a band having an exclusive release on their website, which I understand, but it's still a fuck you. You could at least share that with your independent, independent sector. Um, well, I will even say just just to jump in really quick is that even you know as a guy who 
is a musician in a band that put out uh, a physical release last year. When we were recording it, it genuinely uh, affected me how many people when we'd be in a recording studio talking to people who are in the industry. We're talking about you know people who tour internationally, who have releases on major labels. And when I say, you know, hey, do you guys, you know, do you press physical? Do you have distribution? Do you do you, do you talk to your indie record stores? And most of them say those still exist. Yep. And I have to be like. I can't believe that this is actually like your perception of it. And that's the the main thing I was trying to overcome with those specific people. Is I was trying to be like y- y- you just need to realize that we're part of this whole ecosystem to go back to what you referred to it as before. We're here, we're part of it. We're we're always here to help out bands. And I think that, that if nothing else I hope that was the one takeaway that these people got when I was talking to them is that like we're here. Utilize us, you know. Let us be a part of it, and don't forget about us. And you know, people always talk about the nostalgia of record stores when they talk about record stores, but it's 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 not it's bigger than nostalgia. I know nostalgia is huge right now, is the thing, but we exist, we we thrive, and we're we're here contributing to the current economy, to the current ecosystem, and what everybody is doing. And a lot of people just don't have that perception of it, and that's what I try to. Hammer home. I mean, what I was getting at was so many things that are big now. Vinyl Me Please wouldn't exist without the success of Record Store Day. Fucking Spotify is pressing Spotify exclusive vinyl. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? It's like, I'm not surprised, but it's clear that they're seeing something that is working mm-hmm. <clears throat> and taking it to their mass audience and pushing it. Mm-hmm. So in a way... It's good for us because it helps keep the format going. Mm. But at the same time, it just, we all, and I, don't, I mean us as a personal store, we as the independent community get very little credit for what's happening. There's, there's Spotify, there's fucking Barnes & Noble exclusive pressings, Hot Topic exclusive pressings, FYE exclusive pressings, uh, so many Urban Outfitters, mm. name a fucking brand. And they have exclusive vinyl. And that wouldn't exist without the success of what record stores did with Record Store Day. And that's pretty incredible. Because think about it. This is just stores with very little PR and very little actual like marketing budget made a huge global phenomenon. And it's pretty fucking cool. And every year there's people who shit on Record Store Day. Say it's not what it used to be, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> Irrelevant. Clogging up, <laughs> clogging up pressing plants with useless garbage. Feel how you want to feel. But that shit, most of the shit that comes out for Record Store Day sells. There's always a couple bombs. A dog's a dog. but I don't know what that phrase means. A, dog a dog's a dog? Yeah. It's like, a, you know, a dog. It's a dog. It's, it, a dog. it's a dog. When yeah. something dogs you, it doesn't change. It's always a dog. Uh, is that like walking like a camel? No. Okay. <laughs> That's sexy. Oh, I'm learning. Little Debbie, little Debbie. I'm camel a coming learning. on Camels home, baby. Camels are the least sexy animal. I don't know what you're talking about. Southern yeah. culture on the skids? Only ones at home. I must have played this song mm, for you. You have. So, uh, we would love to know your thoughts. Uh, as Spotify users, uh, we don't hate. As Spotify users, uh, A... Hey, uh, go subscribe to our podcast on Spotify. It exists right there. Um, Help us get a piece of the pie. They're buying companies to monetize podcasts. That's right. So let's monetize this. We'll keep this whole fucking thing going. And you can scratch JB's back. Mm. If you're real lucky. We should do like a deep exfoliation, too. <laughs> like we'll give somebody a Brillo pad. <laughs> Just a small glass of water. and just exfoliate your skin. This does sound like it would be really nice. I think it would be a little painful, no, but the, also before really he lies nice. down, we show him like a little, like a regular Brillo pad, and then we pull him like a car waxer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, dude, that's gonna get gummed up so quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, let us know uh, what you think uh, about Spotify. Leave it in the comments below. JJ, is there a release date for the list yet? Uh, there's no announced release date. I don't know it. It usually comes <clears throat> around the time of South by Southwest. Mm-hmm. So. I think it, it used to be timed with the end of South By, 
I think maybe it might be it has been bumped up to be the beginning of South so by keep the balance between the shifting dates. Actually, well, a nice thing that they did starting last year was to release the list before all of our orders are due as stores. Mm. So that's really cool because when you tell us the things you're excited about, it helps us order them properly. So if you're really excited about the fucking Blue Oyster Cult release, we want to know. If you're excited about anything, we want to know. Which brings me to the topic of pre-orders. Unless really. it's Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> hey, those Blue Oyster Cult records already pieces fucking sell. Yeah, it's bizarre. Uh, let us know what you're interested in. Hey, we have a pre-order section on our website. You can look at things that are coming out. Even things, if you've just heard a, a little rumor about something that's coming out, you can still get on the list for those exact things. It helps us get things for you. So we can have more of what you're looking for here at Darkside. Uh, speaking of rumors, somebody brought this up in the uh, beginning of the Dorkside podcast, which the, is more relevant to this podcast. But the Fleetwood Wolverine Mac. and Infinity War? The yeah, Fleetwood Mac the album that just celebrated 42 years? Yep, that one too. Okay. The much-awaited Tool album that has mm. been announced for April. Not going to happen. Somebody was just telling me yesterday that... Uh, uh, somebody in an interview said more like June, July. Maynard James Keenan, as of this week, has said as he's thinking for maybe May, June, or July. And there was some joke about if we can get along enough, long enough to master it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the last time you teased me with a Tool record, it was not a Tool record, and I was upset. Listen, it was my <laughs> guess, and I was wrong. We're referring, of course, to the Sleep album that dropped last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm off the hype train. Entirely. Until I see a release date somewhere. I think it's still going to be a surprise. You're going to hear a teaser audio track, and you're going to cream your pants. That's what I'm saying. When you give me some concrete info, when you give me a detail, I'll be back on the hype train. Until then, I'm out. How much more I bet he releases another Perfect Circle record for now and then? (laughs) (laughs) Definitely a plus of a record. I would still buy. Um, But, I mean, I'm not holding my hopes up, but... We could have a new Tool record this year, which I feel like since the incarnation of Dark Side, people have been asking, when's there going to be a new, new Tool, tool record? record? Yeah, And you finally get to say... I finally might get to say, hey, there's a new Tool record. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go on record and say, if there is a new Tool record this year, mm. it will be our best seller of the year. Yeah, I would, I would say I that... I can foresee very little interference there unless Adele pops out a new one or <laughs> she's due right yeah she's due I don't know what she's doing but like I mean I can think of any, not much that would compete with I, a new I, tool I, I don't think anything could compete with a new tool record mm-hmm. like in in our world in our little ecosystem here mm. <clears throat> I think that we might sell more of a new tool record than we've sold of any other record before like I think mm-hmm. it'll outsell Queen's greatest hits from in December, which is when we sold. I can't remember what the number was from the last podcast, but mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm. How much want to bet he waits until like midnight on December thirty first to, <laughs> to drop it? That's the Trent Reznor move, actually. <laughs> I'll be excited when I see it. Yeah, like you, you guys can duke it out. Uh, just leave. Uh, I'm not. I'm not to looking this. to duke anything. I'm just. Uh, if you get to speculate on the dark side, I get to speculate <laughs> on dark side. I mean, Wolverine's pretty exciting, too. No, yeah. it's not. Look, I got my hopes up for April, and they let me down. Maybe it's still a ruse. Maybe I'm just, it's still... I'm, I'm hurt, and I'm just giving myself some healthy boundaries because I just, I you know, I can't take more rejection. And that's I'm it just... on the Dark Side podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. It could still be like a record store day release. The whole thing could be a big fuck you PR, mm-hmm. and they could just drop it for record store day, which they should do because that would be amazing. 100 copies. Heard it here first. I Maybe. mean, it's not fact. So. All right. Well, that's enough for y- you all to chew on for one episode of a podcast. Uh, thank you to everyone who has listened. Uh, if you haven't already, go on to iTunes, go on to Google Play, go on to Spotify, and subscribe. Uh, you can get a whole bunch more episodes with a bunch more content, uh, including much more speculation about Tool albums. Uh, 
If you are listening to this on iTunes, please leave us a nice review. Leave us some stars. I don't want to tell you how many to leave, but let's say six, eight. All the stars. That's not a number. Uh, and you know, Billions of trillions of stars? Yes. Say something nice in the comments as well. What the hell? Uh, it helps us expose ourselves to new listeners. Uh, so that's it for the Dark Side Records podcast. Uh, on behalf of Dark Side Records, of course, thank you. I'm JB. I'm Berto. I'm JJ. See you in the bins. Uh, everyone watching on here, Cole's watching. Go Cole's right there. now and subscribe to our podcast that on whatever the platform is that oh, you enjoy. Weird. If it's, she just texted me and yelled at me for going back to his back iTunes. Hair. <laughs> you guys are doing so well, and now it's back to back. Air. Spotify, <laughs> Google Play. Men of a certain age, what can I say? Well, whatever it is, go subscribe on that. I see you didn't mention that on the Dark Side podcast. It would do no, really nice forgot. things for us. <laughs> it would help us out a lot. And thanks for watching on Facebook. I assume you're subscribing on Facebook. So if you're not following us on Facebook right now, click that smash button. Let's, I guess it's over here. The follow, the little thumbs up guy, maybe. I don't really. I don't know if you can do that on the mobile. Anymore. I don't know. Hmm. Just Okay, so. You can touch the share button down there on the left. Down there. Go touch that share button. Share oh, wait, this. Wait, it's backwards. Okay. I might delete this live stream anyway and just uh, upload the final podcast version. One and done. One so, and done. I like it. It's Limited a little, edition. little special treat for everybody who's watching. Now that's, is your chance. This is, of course, the bonus content section of the live stream. If you have a question you've ever wanted to ask someone at Darkside, we will give you exactly one minute to do that. So leave a question in the comments below. We will answer literally anything for you. In the meantime, you can watch us mill around. Mill, mill, mill. Shuffle some papers. Meek another, mill. Another chip. Mill, mill, mill. What's your uh, what's your hummus recipe, JJ? Uh, it's one pound of chickpeas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go four cloves of garlic because I like the garlics. You uh, see this? Let's see, two ounces of quality olive oil. Okay. Third of a cup of tahini. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit of water. Some kosher salt. Mm-hmm. That's about it. And normally I would put uh, <coughs> sumac on top, but mm. I didn't couldn't find my sumac, so I went in zatar. Okay. Mm. Okay. Zatar hummus today. Cool. Yeah, it's zatar spiced. Okay. Did someone just leave us a comment there? Oh, a yeah. question? They did. Uh, Layla. <laughs> Layla. Layla asked, Layla. how do you make the hummus? So, <laughs> check. <laughs> Done. Thanks, Lily, for asking us a question. Anyone else? You've got 30 seconds here if you want to. Eve says, where should I sleep in Poughkeepsie area for RSD? In the um, lot outside with everyone else waiting in line. You can sleep line. with the hobos outside. Steve um, Feldman. Artie's, Artie's uh, bed and bungalow is back over that way. Great mm-hmm. B&B. Mm-hmm. Alternatively, there is a legitimate days in, like, walking distance up the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or there's some places on Route 9, like they're building yeah. some new hotels. But I would say, I would consider it this way. Come down the night before, camp out, and then have your hotel booked for the day of Saturday so you can yeah. rest after sitting outside all night. Because if you really... Want to get in that line? We'll be offering a contest where you can sleep in JB's van for Record Store Day. <laughs> he doesn't JB. know it yet. But. Uh, <laughs> I like to cuddle. Full disclosure. Feels like a rug. You also have to groom him. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's right. Get grooming. Uh, yeah, that's right. But I mean, last year there was a lot. Like there were people. There were a lot of cam- there fucking. Were they were tailgating. Fifteen people. Like yeah, there were people like grilling food and hanging out and playing music on a boombox with space heaters. heaters and so yeah, maybe DJs. maybe we should like start a group where people could say like, hey, well, this is what I'm bringing to the uh, the parking like lot of like a potluck yeah. kind of thing. I'm gonna make. Okay, would you like us to make a, a dark side RSD Facebook group? So people can coordinate things to bring for Record Store Day. The overnighters. The, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Or make your own fucking group. I mean, come on. Like, we're, gonna, we're just the ideas people here. Go. Uh, no, no, we should moderate that. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, I'm going to go turn it off now. Okay. Yep. Thanks for watching, Internet. Adios. We love you.